This is the 25th of May, 2023. Um, it's early evening here, Norwich, UK. The, the light is failing. Where I live, the, there's all the fire engines have come out. It's a tower block and they're doing a training exercise. And um, it looks real, almost feels real, but of course we know it's not real. There's no fire in this tower block. Um, if there was, this would be a terribly serious incident. But like I said, the car park's full of fire engines and personnel, and it looks real. But of course, there's no sense of panic and, and fear and terror because it's just an exercise. So I just came down to do a video this evening and um, I've just written up notes and uploading the last video Trevor and I did earlier today. And this thought occurred to me, Catch-22. And if you've read that novel based, in this, uh, based on the Second World War, it's a Catch-22 situation. It, it's a book title and it's sort of a dark comedy about the war. And that phrase stuck in my mind when I was a young man, I read that book, and it's a catch-22. And many people use that phrase, so they don't really know where it comes from, but it's a catch, and it's catch-22. So unless, unless you let the Holy Spirit in, how do you know there is, there is the Holy Spirit? Unless you let Jesus in, how do you know there is Jesus? And here's the mystery of faith. It's not I who was looking for God. It was Jesus who came looking for me. And I know that's what the scripture says, but we think we chose God, and we did. But we know that God has said that it's not you who first chose me, it's I who first chose you. And we were chosen and set apart even before we were created in the womb. So who's the we? The body of Christ, the church, the disciples. But this, we're not, we're not automatically saved because we've been created by God and we come into this world with nothing and we leave this world with nothing. We come as a spiritual being into the womb, into the cluster of cells at conception, that little physical embryo, physical life that started in the mother's womb, receives the spirit of the person. And my human spirit was made by God before I came into this physical world. And that's the truth for all of us. So Adam was created and God put Adam's spirit within Adam. And the human spirit, we are not God. And we're not gods, small g. We're not gods, we're not idols. But when you're born of God, you receive the Spirit of God within you. <clears throat> you're still a human spirit, a created human spirit, like angels. Angels were created as spiritual beings, spiritual beings without human bodies. And humans were created a little lower than the angels. But of course, in Christ, we are higher than the angels because Christ is higher than the angels. So this catch-22 phrase is unless you become born of God, how can you enter the kingdom of heaven? How do you even know there is a kingdom of heaven? And of course, we who preach and or teach the subject of the kingdom of heaven, we do our very best to explain what the kingdom of heaven is. And of course, we quote what Jesus has said. It's like a mustard seed. Well, that, how can the kingdom of heaven be like a mustard seed? And this is, this, these parables that Jesus told were designed, if you like, designed 
uh, concepts within the mind of Christ in context of his day, his culture, to explain the kingdom of heaven to the people of his day, Jewish people, by and large Jewish people. He, he did talk to the, uh, the, the odd Gentile here and there, but he came for the children of Israel. And he spoke in parables. And he, he wanted them to see there was more to life than they thought, than their intellect told them, than the physical realm. So he taught in the spiritual realm things of the Holy Spirit. So how do you know there's a Holy Spirit until you know there is a Holy Spirit? And how do people know there's unholy spirits, which we're talking about fallen angels, we're talking about the demons. And people in 2023, uh, 2023 they call it the post-Christian age, post-truth, post-modern, post-morality, everything's relative, believe what you like. Whatever religion suits you, you can have that religion. You live your religion and you keep your religion to yourself. And that includes many people, we'll call them churchgoers, we'll call them Christians. And they believe they're Christian because they go to church. But until they choose to be born again, how can they be born again? And if a churchgoer believes they're a Christian because of their church going, and they believe they're good enough to go to heaven because of their church going, because of their charity, because of their generosity, with their time, their money, and their resources, and they quote, work for the church. And, and the majority of churches now, year 2023, they are run overtly as a business. And all the business principles of running an organization is how the church is run, because they see the church as an organization. And okay, uh, okay so I use the JW.org organization as a way of um, explaining organizations. And as an organization goes, the JW.org worldwide global organization evangelized through their books, their so-called version of the truth from their so-called version of their Bible. They are evangelizing, selling their ideas with free books. They're giving their ideas away. And what's their benefit? They're gaining membership. They're adding numbers to their denomination, and they call themselves Christian. So I use the JehovahsWitness.org organization as an example of all the church organizations. But of course, the Christian denominations are not like the Jehovah Witnesses. The Christian, evangelical, Bible-believing, truth-preaching churches of Christianity are not Jehovah's Witnesses. We're not Jehovah's Witnesses, we are true Christians. And within Christianity, there is a huge, huge spectrum of beliefs to the left and to the right, and those in the middle, and every point in between. But of course, the emphasis here is unless you become born again, how can you know what that born again experience is. Unless you follow Jesus and put down your nets for three years, how can you become a fisher of men? And what does that mean to fish men, to catch men? And it's not about the money. It's not about adding numbers to your church group, your organization, your charity. It's not about adding numbers bums on seats, bank account details. Absolutely not. And, and we know this. And, and most people in, let's call them the proper Christian denominations, they will say they agree. 
but church has to be organized there has to be order within christianity and this is called justification justification and it, it's an it's very hard for the mindset of 2023 to accept the true church is the body of Christ as, quotes was on that first day of Pentecost, full of the Holy Spirit, baptized with the fire of God to go out into all the world around them, Jerusalem, and to preach the truth in the power of the Holy Spirit. And bear in mind, of that first day of Pentecost, the New Testament, the New Covenant that God has given us to explain what the New Covenant is through Christ by the blood of the Lamb, the New Covenant was not written down. So there was no way of checking what they should do as, quotes, Christians, Messianics. They were literally led by the Holy Spirit and those who were full of the Spirit of God, they were the ones used by God to lead the others in the spirit of prophecy. What is God saying? Where does God want us to, to go? What does Jesus want us to do today? And the leadership of the Holy Spirit is a very hard thing to explain. Those with the Holy Spirit discern those with the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ. Discern the body of Christ. Stop taking communion as a ritual, as a, quotes sacrament. You cannot eat the body of Christ. You cannot drink the blood of Jesus Christ. This idea came to me today as I was talking with Trevor and I had this revelation about somebody on Facebook who's really struggling and obviously thinks I'm wrong with the communion in certain traditional religious denominations they believe that the the bread becomes the body they believe that the red wine becomes the blood not as a symbol not as a token but actually it becomes the body and the blood of Christ and, and they quote the scripture on that. And of course, that's called uh, transubstantiation. It's a false doctrine. It's a lie. It's a doctrine of demons. Because we don't eat Christ like cannibals. And Jesus wasn't talking about eating him, his physical flesh and his physical blood. And at no point does, does what he said mean that the bread actually becomes his body and the, the red wine actually becomes his blood. And what I said to Trevor was, if that was what Jesus was meaning, then they would have been instructed to actually catch the blood pouring out of Jesus' hands and feet and side. And I don't want to even say it because it's a demonic thing to drink blood. This is what Satanists do. They drink the blood of human beings or chickens in their ceremonial um, uh, rituals, satanic demonic rituals of drinking the blood of animals or even human beings. And that is Satanism. We are not of this world, and that includes, but not of the spirits of this world, the occult spirits, we're not of them, the spirits of this world. We are of Christ. We have the Holy Spirit who explains to us that we don't have to take communion as a sacrament to get right with God again whenever we do this thing. We remember Jesus Christ when we break the bread. And that bread can be bread of, of all types of bread. And that comes down to the body of Christ. What do you agree to use as the elements? 
a wafer, a cracker, uh, unleavened bread. But it's, it's bread. It's not cake. And, and the wine was red wine symbolizing his blood, the blood of Christ. It's not white wine. It's not water. It's not orange juice. We must be very careful to be led by the Holy Spirit, to not misinterpret, misunderstand Scripture. The Holy Spirit teaches us, and He is within our conscience, within our mind, within our spirit, our mind, and our bodies, in that order. In your human spirit, the temple for the Holy Spirit is your human spirit. That's where God dwells, in your human spirit, within your soul, within your body. And your spirit has power and authority over your thoughts, your feelings, and your action. So your spirit has power over your soul, which is your mind, emotions, and your will. It's, you can choose what to do. Take captive all your thoughts and make sure that what you think, you examine it, by the Holy Spirit, by Scripture, and fellowship of believers, if you're thinking of doing something, submit one to another out of reverence for Christ and ask them, do you think Jesus wants us to do this, to go there and to do this? And that includes the money. Rich young rulers, go sell all you have, give it to the poor. Well, what does that mean, Jesus? Now you're asking the right question. Life in Christ is not about merchandising your time, your money, your expertise, your gifts. It's not about selling. It's about giving. Giving, 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 giving. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Of course, as you give, you will receive. There will be genuine people wanting to bless you back. But that's not why we do it. If that was the case, the Jehovah's Witnesses who knock on doors, and remember, they're a parable of uh, the Christian church. They are not a Christian church, even though they call themselves Christian. They're not Christ-centered. They're not full of the Holy Spirit. But what they do knocking on doors... If the motive was to lead rich young rulers to Christ, therefore the church will benefit from the income, then that is the motive of knocking on the doors of the houses in the richest part of the suburbs. You knock on the doors of the rich to lead them to Christ so they come to your church and they bring their money with them. And 10% of a million pounds is a, is a lot of money for a local church. But that is not our motive. Jesus never said, preach to the rich. And he, he, Jesus did, was not talking about being like Robin Hood, robbing the rich to feed the poor. That's not Christ either. So we're back to this thing called Catch-22. Unless you want to become born again, Nicodemus, you won't be born again. And Nicodemus could not understand it. John 3. How can I re-enter my mother's womb? That's a ridiculous thought. He could not understand. To come right back to the beginning. To that place of forgiveness, cleansing by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood that cleans out the inside cleans the temple for the Holy Spirit. Your human spirit must be clean for God to come in to live within you, your spirit. Then the process of filling you from within begins the moment you give your life to Christ, the moment you repent as a sinner, believe on the cross, I believe you died for me, Jesus, for my personal sins, I ask you, Jesus, to be Lord of my life, number one. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me, and I will be clean. 
Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I want to be baptised with fire. I want the fire of God to fill my temple within me. The temple for the Holy Spirit. There is this terrible, terrible false doctrine called cessationism. And people who are duped by this false teaching, false uh, preaching, false doctrine, they are so certain they're right that they are denying the need for them to be baptised with fire of the Holy Spirit. They believe the theology, their minds, they might think they're born of God because that's what they believe. But to deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit today is a serious, serious, serious rejection of God the Holy Spirit. God lives within his people, us. Born again, Holy Spirit filled, baptized with the fire of God within. Spiritual gifts are absolutely necessary, crucial, vital, essential for us to keep looking at the world and realizing we're not part of the spirits of this world anymore. And the, the rich young ruler said, good teacher, what must I do? And Jesus told him the truth, only God is good. And Jesus wasn't denying that he was a good teacher. He was putting that into perspective. Only God is good. You call me a good teacher. God is the teacher. My father, my father teaches me. The Holy Spirit teaches me. And of course, Jesus was fully God, the only begotten son, not created but full of the Holy Spirit himself. And he spoke the truth, giving glory to his Father. Only God is good. Go tell the priest what God has done. When he did miracles, go tell the priest what God has done. He humbled himself, submitted to his Father's will. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father. And Christ's Father is my Father. He's your Father, Heavenly Father. And we're all coming to Christ one day of salvation at a time. We don't know when the end comes. Only the Father knows. So we'll, it, we'll leave it there. Pray for those on the Facebook. We're trying to tell them you need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You must ask to be baptised with the Holy Spirit. But their minds are made up, and this is a catch-22 situation. Unless they accept that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is real, and for now, they cannot be baptised with the Holy Spirit. It's their choice. Unless you choose Christ, Christ can't be the head of your life, number one. He can't be your Lord if you don't choose him as Lord. If you don't choose to repent, you can't be forgiven for your sins. Father, I pray for those who hear what the Spirit is saying, to accept what the Spirit is saying, even if their mind struggles. But in a principle, Lord, uh, there are people who say, Lord, if this baptism of the Holy Spirit is from you, I want to receive this baptism. And at that moment, they receive the baptism. It's about faith, to hear what God is saying, agree with God, and do the very thing God has told you to do. Believe and be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus came as the Lamb of God to baptize with fire, blood and fire. God bless you, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. Keep praying for us in Norwich, UK, as we are praying for you there. 
one day of salvation at a time. God bless you.